Okay, so we're taking a look at a biography of Franklin Delano Roosevelt for which speech, Alexa? Uh, Pearl Harbor Address to the Nation. Excellent. Pearl Harbor Address to the Nation. So Roosevelt is giving a speech the day after Pearl Harbor, and what, is he, what does he want? Well, not to stop it. He wants to join it. Because it's going on, and now the Japanese have attacked us, so he wants the Congress to declare war on Japan. That's what the speech is all about. Right? So we have a president who wants to declare war on Japan, Roosevelt. Now, Alexa must write a biography, a short story of Roosevelt's life. And that biography must not only tell me about Roosevelt, but focus on his role as a president, because that's when he gave the speech. So let's see how she did. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was born on January 30th, 1882 in Hyde Park, New York. She starts very well by giving the place and date of his birth. If you don't have a date of birth at least for your, um, your speaker, you need to put that in there and you might make a comment. Franklin was born into a wealthy family. They made their fortune in real estate and trade. Probably a good piece of information, background on his family. One little issue that I will address with this word Franklin. Can anybody tell me what that issue is? Kayleen? That's correct. So Alexa wants to change that to Roosevelt. When you are referring to your speaker by one name only, you refer to that speaker by the last name, not the first. First name is personal. Last name is formal. And you are writing in a formal sense. Good. Roosevelt was born into a wealthy family. They made their fortune in real estate and trade. In 1910, once again, changed that Franklin to a Roosevelt. Franklin was invited to run for the New York State Senate. Breaking from his family tradition, he ran as a Democrat in a district that had voted Republican for the past 32 years. Franklin Roosevelt was stricken with polio in 1921. He helped fight for a cure for polio. In 1933, Roosevelt became the 32nd U.S. president and was the only president to be elected four times. He led the United States through the Great Depression and World War II. Roosevelt, Roosevelt sorry, helped develop a strategy for defeating Germany through a series of invasions. In the afternoon on April 12, 1945, he died. His death came as a shock to the public. He died while a president, by the way, in his fourth term. It's not, not every day that a president actually dies or in office. So yeah, it was pretty shocking to the public that had come to love this man quite a bit. All right, let's take a look at her biography. We should be focusing on Roosevelt's career as a president, because he gives a speech as a president, so that's what's relevant. Can somebody tell me how many sentences Alexa has just written? Look at the screen. Count. How many sentences has she written? Uh, I think 11. Close. 11 sentences total. What? Did you? It's more. Uh, 11 sentences total. Let's double check. We've got one, two, three, I'm looking at the period, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven. How many of those sentences deal with his life as a president? Are you counting the last one? What have we got? Um, right, one, two, three. Is it, where's the fourth? Am I missing one? Oh, but that's his Senate position. That's okay. So, President, three. How many other sentences deal with his political life? Okay. 
one. Uh, we've got that one, invited to run to New York Senate. And then this one, right, running as a Democrat. I think it's two. How many are about his personal life? Is it the other six? Seems that way, right? So, does Alexa spend enough of her time focusing on his role as a politician and a president? You're saying yes, no? Just in terms of sentences, she might want to spend more time focusing on his role as a president and less time focusing on his role or his personal life. However, 5 out of 11 is not bad. Obviously, her major focus is politics. She has a couple sentences on polio, a couple sentences on family background, but she has five sentences on him as a politician. It seems to be her major focus. So actually, Alexa, I'm thinking it's pretty okay. Because you're focusing on him as a president and a politician, as a political figure. We read an FDR biography this morning that had out of about 12 sentences, one sentence about him as a politician. And that was the problem. That they were, that biography was focusing on his children, his personal life, um, the children that lived, the children that died, and it had very little to do about his politics. But Alexa's I'm saying is just fine because she has focused on him as a president and as a politician, which is what I need to hear. She mentions his efforts during the Great Depression and World War II. She tells that he was 32nd president and the only president to be elected four times. I have the important biographical information to understand the background of the speech. Alexa's doing just fine. How many words must this be? How many words minimum? 150. Thank you, Bailey. 144. So I'll tell you what. Add a little bit more about him as a president, and you've got your 150, and you're fine. So, Alexa, what I would do for you Alexa has a three. A three out of four means that her biography is good, it's focused, it gives important details. I understand who FDR the president is, but it's a three because it's not long enough. So once she adds more information, she's raising it up to a four. And it's not a problem. Uh, like to do another one. Uh, raise your hand if you did write it early, like like Karen and Jason, Natalie, you too, Gabe, uh, Lauren. Let's see here. Gabe, you have uh, Steve Jobs. Okay, we're gonna take a look at yours. So let's look at Gabe's Steve Jobs biography. Remember, he's delivering the speech, Stay Hungry, Stay Foolish, which is the commencement of... Hey, I gave you feedback. Oh, yeah. See, it's a fourth. Excellent. Natalie, you worked on Steve Jobs also, right? So let's find this. Okay, Steve Jobs, Stay Hungry, Stay Foolish, commencement address at Stanford, was it? Stanford University? All right. Before the late 1900s, there were no very successful computer companies. Society did not have much advanced technology. On February 24th, 1955, in San Francisco, California, Steve Jobs was born. His parents promised he would go to college. Oops, sorry. During his high school career, he met his future business partner, Steve Wozniak. At college, Jobs learned about calligraphy and typography. At the time, Jobs attended Stanford University. 
Jobs started working for Atari, an early pioneer manufacturer of personal computers. He and his partner, partner Wozniak learned enough to start building their own personal computers in Steve's garage. Uh, once again, there's the, the first name, last name kind of thing. So you want to change Steve to Jobs. And it will be Jobs, J-O-B-S, apostrophe, on the outside. The two were assembling computers and selling them to a store called Fight Shop. They then found, founded the Apple Corporation in 1979. Then after he was fired from Apple, he founded Next, which was later bought by Apple, and he was working with the company again. Later, he also founded Disney's Pixar Animations. Graduating from Stanford University, Jobs gave the commencement address to his graduating class. He delivered his speech at the graduation ceremony at Stanford University. In his speech, Jobs wants to convince people to move forward where life takes you and to continue to search and do what makes you happy. That every experience you go through will all be worth it. Six years later, Steve Jobs died to insulinoma. Insulinoma? Insulinoma. Okay, sorry. Uh, which is a tumor in the pancreas. When he was in his teens, working in the computer industry, he was exposed to a lot of toxic substances used. Some of these, uh, looks like he dropped the S there, included lead, mercury, and cadmium. The exposure was likely to cause his cancer. Within this material, Natalie's including some information which is not necessarily relevant to understanding Steve Jobs' life. So somebody tell me which sentence you might want to cut because it's probably not relevant to a general biography. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so why are we cutting that? Very good. He is correct. This is about the speech, not about the biography, so we'll just take that out. What about there? Same issue. What sentences can Natalie just remove because they are not directly relevant to biography? Biography that starts simply with the date and place of birth is just fine. Remember, talking about the historical context is part of the introduction. Talking about the purpose of the speech is part of the analysis and a little bit of the introduction. Here, just focus on the life, and as we talked about with Alexis, make sure that your focus on that person's life directly addresses their background relevant to the speech. His background relevant to the speech is his professional life. Notice that Natalie never mentioned a family, never mentioned uh, marriage, never mentioned children, never mentioned his parents. Why? Because she probably thought that that was not very relevant to the speech. She just talks about his professional life. So I think Natalie's now that we cut that extra information, it's fine. Do a check. 209. I would say at this point, we're talking about a four. If I were to read through that, I'd breeze through it, understand how who Steve Jobs is, relevant to the speech, and it would be no problem. I've got birth to death and all the important events in between. 